taken place among us, so that you may know the absolute truth about everything. In the days when Caesar Augustus was emperor of Rome, and when Herod the Great was king of Judea, God sent the angel Gabriel to visit a virgin of the city of Nazareth, and the virgin's name was Mary. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. How can this be? I am a virgin. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So Mary traveled to a town in Judea to visit her cousin Elizabeth who was also miraculously with child. Elizabeth! Mary! Cousin Mary! You're the most blessed of all women, and blessed is the child you will bear. For as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby within me jumped with gladness. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Know, all men of Nazareth, that by command of Caesar Augustus, there will be conducted a census of the subject territories of Galilee and Judea. All men must register forthwith in the towns and cities of their ancestral birth. And Mary went to Bethlehem in Judea to register with Joseph, her betrothed. But there was no room for them in Bethlehem, and the only lodging they could find was a humble stable. Now there were some shepherds in that part of the country who were taking care of their sheep at night when the angel of God appeared to them and the glory of God shone about them. This very day in David's town your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. The shepherds hurried to see the newborn babe in the manger and were the first to spread the good news or gospel of the virgin mother and the Savior's birth. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was given the name Jesus, and Joseph and Mary took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. In the temple, there was a good and devout man who the Holy Spirit had promised would not die until he had seen the Christ. His name was Simeon. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. This child is chosen by God. May you both be blessed. And when they had completed all their duties according to the law of Moses, they left Jerusalem and returned to Nazareth. When Jesus was 12 years old, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. But when they started back home, thinking that the boy was with them, Jesus stayed behind. They returned to the city looking for him, and on the third day found him in the temple sitting with the rabbis and elders. Whose child is this who asks such questions? He's from Nazareth, 
We thought he had left with us. Please forgive him his zeal. All who heard him were amazed. Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been terribly worried trying to find you. How is it that you looked for me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And he came with them to Nazareth and increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. Fifteenth year of the rule of the Emperor Tiberius, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod the ruler of Galilee, and Annas and Caiaphas the high priests. The word of God came to John in the desert, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, and God will forgive your sins. As it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up, every hill and mountain leveled off. Winding roads must be made straight and the rough paths made smooth and all mankind will see God's salvation. What shall we do? Yes, tell us, You brood of vipers! What do you want us to do? What must we do? Tell us. Whoever has two shirts must give one to the man who has none. Yes, that's right, that's what we have to do. And whoever has food must share it. Teacher, we are tax collectors. What shall we do? We know that well enough. Don't collect more than is legal. And what about us? What are we to do? Don't take money from anyone by force. And don't accuse anyone falsely. Be content with your pay. Tell us, are you the Christ? Yes, are you the Christ? Tell us! I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I'm not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. And the Holy Spirit came down upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. When Jesus began his work, he was about 30 years old. 
He returned from the Jordan full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the desert where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. In all this time, he ate nothing. And the devil said to him, If you are God's son, order this stone to turn into bread. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil took him up and showed him in a second all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all this power and all this wealth. It has all been handed over to me and I can give it to anyone I choose. All this will be yours then, if you worship me. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. And him only shall you serve. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and set him on the highest point of the temple. If you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For the scripture says God will order his angels to take good care of you. It also says they will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. The scripture says you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Hello. And on the Sabbath, he went as usual to the synagogue. And was called upon to read a portion of the prophet Isaiah. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. This passage of scripture has come true today, as you heard it being read. The scripture come true? But only the Messiah can fulfill that promise. Sure we know. Doubtless you will quote the proverb to me. Physician, heal thyself. You'll also say to me, do hear the things in your own hometown that we heard were done in Capernaum. I tell you this, no prophet is ever welcome in his hometown. They meant to throw him over the cliff, but he walked through the middle of the crowd and went his way.
and came to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. The Roman occupation of the nation was in evidence everywhere, and the people longed for the Messiah to free them from the tyranny. be with you. And you, Master. Will you both bear me, Simon? Why not? Once there were two men who went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood apart by himself and prayed, I thank you, God, that I am not greedy or dishonest or an adulterer like everybody else. I thank you that I am not like that tax collector over there. I fast twice a week and I give you one-tenth of all my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and would not even raise his face to heaven, but beat upon his breast and said, God, have pity on me, a sinner. I tell you, the tax collector, not the Pharisee, was in the right with God when he went home. For the man who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Push the boat out further to the deep water. Then you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Oh, master, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. James! John! Away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. You know not what manner of spirit you are, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. He shall prosper in his purpose on Babylon, and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. Jesus, I beg you to save my only daughter. Sir, have mercy. She's only 12 years old and, and dying. Please, please come with me. Cyrus, I'm sorry. Jesus! Your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be well.
Do not weep. She's not dead, but only sleeping. Child. something to eat. I charge you. Tell no one what has happened here. And after this, he saw a publican named Matthew Levi sitting at the toll gate for the receipt of the customs. And Jesus went up a hill to pray and spent the whole night there praying to God. And when day came, he greeted the twelve of them whom he named apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter. And Andrew, his brother. James. And John. Philip. and Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which was the traitor. Blessed are you, Paul, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and reject you and insult you and say you are evil, all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy, because a great reward is kept for you in heaven. For their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets. What do you mean that's all you've got? How right. terrible for you who are rich now. You have had your easy life. 
<laughs> he doesn't want to be big. He must be mad. How terrible for you who laugh now. For you shall mourn and weep. How terrible when all men speak well of you. For their ancestors said the very same things about the false prophets. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the one cheek, let him hit the other one also. And if someone takes away your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do for others only what you would have others do for you. If you love only the people who love you, why should you receive a blessing? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners do that. How could he touch her? How could he talk to her? No. Love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. And then you will have a great reward for you will be sons of the Most High God. For he is good to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Lead us in thy path, O oh Lord. <laughs> Give, and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. One blind man cannot lead another. If he does, they will both fall into a ditch. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but pay no attention to the log in your own eye? Guide us, master. We need you now, Lord. How happy is the mother that bore you and nursed you. <laughs> Rather, how happy are those who hear the word of God and obey it. I'd like to know this man. Do you think he might be the Messiah? <laughs> this Pharisee invited Jesus to have dinner with him. And Jesus went to his house and sat down to eat. Come along, children. Off you go. You heard me. Go. Just get up to all the mischief going, but good, son. <laughs> what is she doing here? I don't. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There were two men who owed money to a moneylender. 
One owed him 500 silver coins, the other 50. Neither of them can pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of both. Which one then will love him more? I suppose that it will be the one who is forgiven more. You are right. You see this woman? I came into your home. You gave me no water for my feet. She has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You did not welcome me with a kiss. But since I came, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You provided no olive oil for my head. But she has anointed my feet with perfume. I tell you then, the great love she has shown proves that her many sins are forgiven. But whoever is forgiven little shows only a little love. Your sins are forgiven you. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I... And Jesus traveled teaching the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve disciples went with him, and so did some women who had been healed of evil spirits. Mary, who was called Magdalene, Joanna, whose husband, Chusa, was steward in Herod's court, and Susanna. But Herod, the Roman appointed ruler of Galilee, threw John the Baptist in prison because he had condemned his marriage to his brother's wife. Well, as we arrived at the gate of Nain, a funeral procession came out. The dead was the only son of a widow. When Jesus saw her, his heart was filled with compassion. He, he touched the coffin and said, Young man, get up, I tell you. Then the dead man sat up. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Ask him, say, are you the one John said was going to come? Or should we expect someone else? sent us to ask if you are the one who is going to come or should we expect someone else go back and tell John what you have seen and heard the blind can see the lame can walk how happy are those who have no doubts about me please pick me up onto my can you see now? I can see Jesus. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he scattered the grain, some of it fell by the path and was trodden on. And the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on rocky ground. And when the plants sprouted, they withered away because they had no moisture. And some seeds fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up with the plants and choked them. And some seeds fell in good soil. And the plants grew and bore grain. One hundred grains each. Master, why do you speak in parables whenever a crowd is near? The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others it comes by means of parables. 
so they may look but not see and listen but not understand. This is what the parable means. The seed is the word of God. The seeds that fell along the path stand for those who hear. But the devil comes and takes the message away from their hearts in order to keep them from believing and being saved. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who hear the message and receive it gladly. But they have no root. They believe only for a while. And when the time of testing comes, they fall away. The seeds that fell among thorns stand for those who hear. But the worries and riches and pleasures of this life crowd in and choke them. And their fruit never ripens. And the seeds that fell in good soil Stand for those who hear the message and retain it in a good and obedient heart. And they persist until they bear fruit. No one lights a lamp and covers it with a bowl. Or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on the stand. So that the people may see the light as they come in. Whatever is hidden away will be brought out into the open. And whatever is covered up will be found and brought to light. Be careful, then, how you listen. Because whoever has will be given more. But he who has not will have taken away from him even the little he thinks he has. Teacher, your mother and brothers are standing outside. They want to see you. My mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and obey it. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. And as they were sailing, he fell asleep. Where is your faith? And they sailed on over to Gadara, which is across the lake from Galilee. with me. I beg you, don't punish me. What is your name? Legion. Lord 
we beg you. Do not send us into the abyss. Let us enter into the herd of swine. Hey! Come back! Stop! Stop! And the demons went out of the man and into the pigs. Leave us! Go away from this place! Leave us! Go away from here! I'll follow you wherever you go. Let me come with you. Go back home and tell what God has done for you. Master, send the people away, so that then they can go to the villages and farms around here and find food and lodging. This is a lonely place. You yourselves give them something to eat. But all we have are five loaves and two fish. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth. Who do the crowd say I am? Some say that you are John the Baptist. Others say that you are Elijah. While others say that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. What about you? Who do you say I am? You are God's Messiah. You shall tell no man of this. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected. He will be put to death. But three days later will be raised to life.
Will any of you come with me? I will follow you, Master. But first, let me go and say goodbye to my family. Anyone who starts to plow and then keeps looking back is of no use for the kingdom of God. If anyone wants to come with me, he must forget himself. Take up his cross every day and follow me. For whoever would save his own life will lose it. And whoever would lose his life for my sake will save it. What will it profit a man if he gain the whole earth and lose his own soul? If any man is ashamed of me and of my teachings, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I assure you, there are some here who will not die until they have seen the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took John and James and Peter with him and went up a hill to pray. And while he was praying, the aspect of his face changed its appearance and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men were talking with him. They were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in heavenly glory. You will fulfill God's purpose. You will die in Jerusalem. James, John. As they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, how good it is that we are here. We will make three tents, one for you. As Peter spoke, a cloud Moses, came and overshadowed them. And one for Elijah. And the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. Teacher, teacher, I beg you, look upon my son. Please, please help him. For he's my only child. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here.
Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And he who seeks will find. And the door will be open to anyone who knocks. <laughs> Would any of you who are fathers give to your son a snake when he asks for a fish. Or a scorpion when he asks for an egg. As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I tell you this. Take no thought in your life for what you shall eat. Nor for your body what you shall wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more worth are you than the birds? Which of you, by being anxious, can add to the length of your life? You cannot do such a small thing. Why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like a single one of them. If God, who clothes the wild grass today, which tomorrow is thrown onto a fire, how much more sure is he to clothe you Oh, you of little faith. Make our faith greater. If you had faith as big as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, pull yourself up by the roots and plant yourself in the sea, and it would obey you. Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to him by whom they come. It would be better for him if a stone were put about his neck and he were cast into the sea, than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. What is the kingdom of God like? It is like this. A man takes a grain of mustard seed and plants it in his field. The plant grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make their nests in its branches. I'm not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and other outcasts? <laughs> People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. I have not come to call respectable people to repent, but outcasts. <laughs> Tell us again about the kingdom. Is there anything else? Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. 
Provide for yourselves purses that don't wear out, and save your riches in heaven, where they will never decrease. Because no thief can get to them, and no moth can destroy them. For your heart will always be where your riches are. Woman, you are free from your sickness. Look! Look, she's cured! It's a miracle! A miracle. It's a miracle. Look, she's cured! You can't see! Hey, hey, hey. Pray to the Lord! <laughs> God keep you, Rabbi. <laughs> there are six days in which we should work. So come on one of those days to be healed, but not on the Sabbath. You hypocrites! Any one of you would untie his ox or his donkey and take it out from the stall to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here is this descendant of Abraham whom Satan has kept in bonds these 18 years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath? Good teacher, what must I do? to receive eternal life. Why do you call me good? No one is good save God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit murder. Do not accuse anyone falsely. Respect your mother and your father. Ever since I was young, I have obeyed all these commandments. There is still one more thing you need to do. You must sell all you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. But we are merchants, wealthy. How hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It is harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Who then can be saved? What is impossible for man is possible for God. Exactly where will this be, God's kingdom? The kingdom of God does not come in such a way as to be seen. No one will say, look, there it is or here it is. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The time will come when you will wish that you could see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. As the lightning flashes across the sky and lights it up from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be on his day. But first he must suffer much and be rejected by the people of this day. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the smallest detail of the law to be done away with. For I tell you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. What should we do? What do the scriptures say? How do you interpret them? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You're right. Do this and you'll live. Who is my neighbor? Not those soldiers. Yes. What about Caesar? There was once a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when robbers attacked him, stripped him, beat him, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest came that way. When he saw the man, he walked by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also came there, went over and looked at the man, and then walked by on the other side. 
But a Samaritan who was traveling on that road came across the man. And when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to the man, poured oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. Then he put him on his own animal and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day he gave the innkeeper two silver coins, and he told him to look after the man. And when I come back, he said, I will pay you whatever else you spend on him. Which one of these three acted like a neighbor towards the man who was attacked by the robbers? The one who was kind to him. <laughs> you then do the same. Hmm. Ah. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the greatest. to see again. Then see. Your faith has made you well. I can see. I can see. I can see. This man truly is a prophet. My lord and master, is save me. Hey, I'm oh, my is he that that is is Oh, oh Lord, save us, save us, Lord. Show us the true way, Lord. No, 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 <laughs> Hurry down, Zacchaeus, for I must stay in your house today. My house? I want to stay in his house. Yes. 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 